This part's going to look at genetic resistance. Genetic resistance is a little bit different than the other materials because it takes a lot of preparation and breeding on the plant, trying to get the plant together. Back when we looked at some of the things we could do, we talked about genetics and biotechnological engineering, genetic engineering of plants to be able to come up with new varieties. We look at two specific things. We look at specific resistance, which is often called vertical resistance because it works against one variety of something. We talk about general resistance, which is often called horizontal resistance because it works against everything in the same way. When we do traditional methods of resistance, what we're looking for is putting materials out in the greenhouse and checking to see how they do. We spray them with stuff, we check them, we do a whole bunch of different things to them in order to try and find out how we can get plants that are better adapted against specific pathogens. This is like the new elm tree that they came out with that now has resistance to Dutch elm disease. This is what they've been doing with wheat for a long period of time. We look at a lot of different spots in there, but how do we go about improving this? This is not necessarily a short process. This is a lifelong process. We then take the material, try it in the field to see if it works. What sort of production do we get? There's no good if we don't get more production than the last time, or at least the same. We should be able to do it with less disease. You can see over here on the left-hand side, you've got something that's disease-resistant. On the right-hand side, you've got something that's very susceptible. We look at these as well when we do genetic engineering engineering. One of the things that they've done over time in an attempt to try and get rid of disease or at least slow it down is what they call a multi-line variety. These were originally done with wheat. The number of races of wheat rust were so great that you couldn't breed something that was equally good against everything. What they came up with was a concept of multi-line varieties. This was normally done with annual crops. It was done with things like stem rust of wheat, where you would take seed of different varieties of wheat that had resistance to different stem rust of wheat pathogens. You'd mix all the seed together, and then you'd plant it in the field. You'd get something like this, where plants in the field would either have resistance to strain one, strain two, strain three, strain four, strain five. They might might even have some that were mixed. No, I didn't put any that were mixed in here. In this particular case, what happens then is if you've got a pathogen that's race one, it lands on a plant that's R1, it doesn't develop. It's got to land on a two, three, four, or five to be able to develop. What this does is it basically dilutes the germplasm out in the field, which makes it much more difficult for whatever races that are coming in to make sure that they're landing on the right plant. You're only getting susceptibility out of some of these, which means you don't knock the disease out entirely. You reduce its ability to go and actually create a lot of disease. A multi-line variety is very interesting when you've got a lot of different types of germplasm and you've got a fairly uniform production of a particular crop, and you've got a pathogen that's got a lot of genetic variation in it. This last part in here asks the question, how can we create integrated, sustained disease management programs? In the end, we want to get down below the economic threshold so that we don't have to do something all of the time. When we do this, we want to create an integrated program. So it is going to use everything that we have available to us. It's not only going to use chemicals. It's not going to rely strictly on chemicals. But it's going to look at what cropping procedures can we do? What laws can we pass? Can we do any roguing? Can we do cultural things to make it where the disease is not favored? We look at which pests are we trying to get rid of? We're trying to get rid of the nematodes out of the cropping system. We want to get rid of the bacteria. We want to get rid of the viruses. We want to get rid of the fungi. We want to get rid of the insect vectors. There's a whole series of things in here. All of these things are pests. We want to make it sustained. We're talking about management. In management, nothing's off the table. We can figure out how we can put things on the table to be able to get this to function properly. In the end, we call this an integrated pest management program. They call this IPM. We're going to do a lot of different things to favor the plant so that we can get the best material out of it. We don't rely just on one control mechanism. We can have an entire process where we manage material so that we get the best production with the least amount of disease.